So, uh, we have discussed that how we can use the instructions to generate uh, time delay. Now, as I already told you, to generate delays or to generate some time gap, we can do, uh, we can use two methods. One with the help of software, means with the help of instructions, we can generate delay. So already we have discussed about uh, these things and uh, we have seen few applications also where uh, we, we can control the timing of blinking of the LED uh, and now we will see how to generate the delay with the help of these timers and counters. Now in case of 8051 microcontroller There are two timers or counters. I am using the word timer slash counter. The hardware is same, but it can be used as timer and it can be used as counter. So from the same hardware, uh, we can we can utilize the same hardware for timer or counter. So basically, in case of timers, uh, we use the timer to generate delays, and we use counters to count certain events. So we will see all these things uh, in coming lecture. So in 8051, there are two timers or counters, and these timers are. 16 bit timer so this 16 bit is the maximum bit so we can use these timers uh, for 8 bit also but uh, maximum number of bits for the timer will be 16 bit and both of these timers or counters are basically uh, up counter So in your digital electronics or uh, digital system design subject, you may have studied about counters. So uh, counters are of two types, up counter and down counter. In case of up counter, counter counts from 0, 1, 2, 3 in this way. And in case of down counter, it counts from higher side, for example, uh, 7, 6, 5, like this, 0. So, in case of 8051, both the counters are up counter. Now, to control the operation of these counters, few registers are provided and uh, uh, these registers are uh, of course are special function registers having some special functions so in case of 8051 microcontroller there is a register named as T mod register right so we can call it as timer mode control timer mode control register this is a 8 bit register This is an 8 bit register. I will draw these 8 bits for this register 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Bit number D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7. These are the 8 bits. This is your least significant bit and this is the most significant bit of T mod register. Now this register is byte addressable. So meaning of byte addressable is uh, all the 8 bits of this register can be accessed 
by certain instruction. You cannot access individual bit of this register. So this is a byte addressable register and this one register is used to control the mode of the operation of both the timers. So one register T mod used for both timers. So we call these timers as T0 and T1. Two timers, timer number 0 and timer number 1. So to control the mode of the operation of both of these timers, we are having only one register and that is T mod register. Now in this, uh, four LSBs, four least significant bits, these bits, these are four LSBs. So four LSBs are used for timer number zero and four most significant bits, these. So these are used for timer number zero and four MSBs are used for timer number one. Timer number one. Now these timers or counters can be operated in four different modes and these modes are <coughs> mode 0, mode 1, mode 2 and mode 3. So these timers can be operated in these modes. Mode 0 is 13 bit timer. Mode 1 is 16 bit timer or counter. So for here also timer or counter. Mode 2 is 8 bit timer or counter with auto reload with auto reload so here the meaning of 16 bit timer means uh, 16 bit value we can load in the registers of the timer and timer will according to the loaded value will generate the delay in case of uh, and once the delay is completed, then again you have to reload the same 16-bit value in the timer register. Whereas in case of mode 2, this is 8-bit timer counter with auto reload. In this we can use the timer counter as a 8-bit counter only. But the one, fac one facility here is, once the counting completes, then the count value will be automatically loaded in the register. Whereas in case of mode 1, uh, the advantage is we can use a 16-bit register for counting, but once the counting is over, we have to again reload the count value. But in case of mode 2, the reloading of count value will be done automatically by the uh, controller. Uh, but here, we can utilize only 8-bit timer. We cannot use 16-bit timer here. Now mode 3 is 8-bit split timer. So in most of the application, we will use mode 1 and mode 2. In mode 3, split 8-bit split timer means it is a 8 bit, two different timers. You can use two 8 bit timers. In 
mode 2 also you are having 8 bit timer but you cannot use uh, you cannot split the timer into 2 8 bit timer only facility is 8 bit value will be auto reloaded but here auto reload facility is not there but we can split one 16 bit timer into 2 8 bit timers so but most of the in all the applications we will use mode 1 or mode 2 so now these four modes can be selected for timer number 0 by bit number D0 and D1. So these bit I write it as M1 and M0. So these M1 and M0 are mode select bits. Bits of timer 0. So you can select any of these mode for timer number 0 with the help of M0 and M1. If these bits are 0 and 0, then mode 0 will be selected. If these bits are 0 and 1, then mode 1 will be selected. If these bits are 1 and 0, mode 2 will be selected. If these bits are 1 and 1, then mode 3 will be selected. <clears throat> now, bit number D2. Bit number D2 is used to select Timer 0 as counter or timer. Now, as I told you, same hardware can be used as a counter or as a timer. In case of timer, it will be used to generate time delay. In case of uh, this uh, uh, counter it will be used to count the events so to select whether we want to operate our uh, this timer as a timer or as a counter we have to use bit number d2 for timer number 0 so this is t slash uh, c slash t1 T slash T bar <coughs> counter slash T bar. So if this bit D2 bit is 0, then timer operation. Timer operation of timer 0 and if this bit is 1 then counter operation then timer will be selected as selected in counter operation and if this bit d2 bit is 0 then uh, timer 0 will be operating timer mode timer operation now there is another bit d3 bit now with the timer uh, once we start the timer, then to stop the timer, we are having two methods. One, with the help of software. So basically we are talking about stop. To stop timer or counter. We are having two methods. One, with the help of software, means with the help of instruction. We just send some instruction, with that instruction your timer or counter will stop. And the second method is with hardware. With the help of some hardware, 
uh, we can stop these timers. So, uh, help of hardware means uh, with the help of some external pulse. If we give some external pulse, whenever our counter or timer will receive some external pulse, then our timer will stop. So, that is the hardware method to stop the timer. And another method, software method. Means simply we give certain instruction, by that your timer will stop. Now to control or to select whether we want to stop the timer by software method or by hardware method. So to select this, there is a D3 bit. So in D3 bit, Write for D3 here. D3 bit. If this bit is 0, then software stop of timer number 0. And if this bit is 1, then hardware stop of timer number 0. So, these are the four bits which are used to select for timer number 0, its mode of the operation, whether we are using the timer as counter or a timer or we want to stop the timer with the application of some instruction or with the help of some pulse, with the help of some hardware. Now higher 4 bits are used for timer number 1 for the selection of same, same things. Now bit number D5 and D4 are M1 and M0 bit for timer number 1. So the value of these bits will select the mode of the operation of timer number 1. Just like for timer number 0. So if these values are 0, 0, then mode 0, that is 13 bit timer. If these values are m1 is 0, m0 is 1, 0, 1. Then uh, mode 1, that is 16 bit timer. If m is 1, m1 is 1 and m0 is 0, then mode 2, that is 8 bit auto reload. And if both of these bits are 1 and 1, then 8 bit split timer. After this, D6 bit is used to select the counter or timer operation. Okay. So, if D6 bit is 0, then timer number 1 will be selected in timer operation, timer mode. And if this bit is 1, then timer number 1 will be selected as counter mode. And D7 bit is used to uh, select how we will stop the timer number 1 with the help of instruction or with the help of hardware. So this is, uh, and, and we, we designate this bit T3 here is gate for timer number 0. Gate 0 and this is gate 1 for timer number 1, gate control bit. So this T mod register is used for both the timers. Now before using the timer, first we have to find out the control word for T mod register. Now suppose in some application our requirement is Our requirement is we want timer number 0 in mode 1, timer operation and software stop. And for these are for timer number 0 and for timer number 1 we require mode 2 and counter operation
एंड हार्डवेयर स्टॉक वी कैन यूज टू टाइमर इन दिकेशन इट इज नॉट लाइक लेट की ओनली वन टाइमर यू टू यूज वी कैन यूज टू टाइमर ऑल्सो बोथ द टाइमर वी कैन यूज Now suppose in our application we want timer number zero to be set in this particular mode and timer number one in this. So for this first we have to find out the control board. So first we will see for timer number zero we require to operate this timer zero in mode one. So to select the mode one these two bits are there and for mode one M is zero and M one is zero and M zero is one. If we put these two bits in M1 and M0, bit number D1 and D0 of T mode register, then timer zero mode one will be selected. Then next timer operation. So for timer operation here, this bit we will keep zero. Software stop. So this bit is also zero. So these four bits will be used for timer number zero mode one. Timer operation software stop. Now for timer number one, we require mode two operation. So for mode mode two, these bits are one zero. Then counter operation. So counter this. This bit should be one. Hardware stop. For hardware stop, this bit should be one. So this is our control board. So our control board in binary it is one 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 zero one. One one zero 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 one zero 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 one in binary. If the number we represent in binary, in the last we write B. And in hexadecimal, it is what is this? This is E, and this is one. So E one H. Now once we have derived the control word, so this is our control word. This is control word for T mod register. Now we have to load this control word in T mod register. So for that we can use this instruction: move T mod comma hash. E one H. This is the control. So basically, T mod is a special function register. There is a definite address for T mod register. That is, the address lies in between eight zero H to F F H. As already we discussed during uh, the description of the RAM. Uh, the addresses from 80h to ffh belongs to a special function register but since it is difficult to remember all these addresses of a special because there are many special function registers right already you have studied about psw is a special function register each bit of psw you can access with the address those bits are having some addresses then ports four ports they are having the addresses each pin of the four ports are having some defined addresses so there are many addresses so it is difficult for the programmer to remember the addresses that's why one facility is given to the programmer that while writing your program you can use this name right so what will happen in this instruction this is the data because hash sign is there This data will be loaded in T mod register. This is our T mod register. And while when we compile or assemble this code, at that time assembler will automatically convert this into its equivalent address. So automatically it will be converted in equivalent address. So for a programmer, uh, no need to worry about uh, this address for T mod register. Simply write this. So we can write the hexadecimal number in T mod register, or same binary number number also you can write. You can write same instruction in this way also. Move T mod comma 
hash write this number 1110001 and in the last you write b uh, this is hash so in this case since we have written b so assembler will understand whatever we have written this is a binary number so directly this 8 bit it will load in t mod register or if we have written e 1h then this number will be loaded in t mod register the moment this binary pattern is loaded in t mod register immediately timer 0 and timer 1 will be set according to these bits these four bits will set your timer 0 and this timer number 1 the moment these 8 bits will be loaded in t mod register immediately timer 0 and timer 1 will be set or reset now once we have selected the timer then how to generate delay with the help of that timer so what are the process for that so that we will discuss in next lecture